Well, today's IMASAT is at an incredibly exciting point yeah, of departure. We've spent more than 300 million a year, every year for the last decade, engaged in a new round of innovation, which is going to utterly transform the next decade for IMASAT, delivering a, a real step change in growth this year as we move into a new era of double digit growth. We've invested in the AlphaSat, a crucial addition to our IMASAT 4 network, and we're putting $1.6 billion behind the IMASAT 5 program, which will deliver the Global Express service. Behind that, we're bringing a new service enablement platform, which will revolutionize our ability to support solutions and services across our network. If that weren't enough, we've invested many millions in a new round of L-band product and service innovation, bringing services like Began HDR, LTAC, and Fleet One to market in the next 12 months. For us, Taking a step back, Emosat is delivering the world's first truly broadband global satellite network. It's a network that will deliver unprecedented speeds, 50 megabits per second. It's more than 100 times faster than our existing global service, and that's cutting edge today. So this is a real revolution in services. But it's doing that on a global basis, and it's doing it on a basis that can serve incredible mobility. We can support aircraft moving at 600 miles an hour with those kind of data speeds. Now when you take that kind of capability and you deliver it to market, it does two things for us. Firstly, it absolutely supercharges and future-proofs our mobile satellite business where we've been a leader for more than 35 years. So for ships, for aircraft, for our government customers looking for comms on the move and comms on the pause, Global Express is an absolute revolution meeting their next generation needs for higher capacity and higher throughput to support their mission critical applications and solutions. What makes this particularly exciting for Imasat is it goes a step further as well. Because for the first time, we've also built the world's true first broadband VSAT network on a global basis. And that's going to take us into more than $2 billion of wholesale value, wholesale revenues for new markets such as energy, a broader government market, including for the first time, commercially supplied military KA band services, um, as well as the enterprise market, and of course the, the market people find very, very exciting, the air passenger connectivity market as well. So it's both a future proofing of our existing business and a, a really material diversification as well. It's a very good question. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is that in an era of budget constraint that's going to go on for the foreseeable future, our US government customers looking for new ways of, of buying services, new levels of agility in their commercial relationship uh, with companies such as ourselves. And I think with Global Express and with our L-band services, our heritage as a mobile satellite operator is going to be very telling. Um, and that's because we build for coverage. We build for global coverage and we provide mobility services wherever the customer wants to be and whenever they want to use our services. And that's unique. And in the context of the US government's needs over the coming years, it's incredibly powerful. Because it doesn't, mean, it doesn't matter where our customer wants to use our services, we're there. We're not asking for capacity to be pre-booked, uh, locked and loaded in a particular geography. We're delivering exceptional quality of service anywhere any time. And that brings a new agility and a new level of efficiency for our relationship for government satcoms uh, to the US government. Well, Global Express has two payloads. It has a global, seamless, uh, commercial KVM payload uh, built for mobility and seamless mobility at 50 megabits per second. But it also has an overlay, each satellite has an overlay of military KA capability that's fully steerable within the field of view of the satellite. And the aggregate capability is equivalent to one WGS satellite in terms of, of, of KA band capability. And why that's unique is it allows our US government customer to do two things. First of all, the military KA band capability is completely fungible or interchangeable with the WGS program. And that means the US government can use us to augment their services or to extend the range of coverage for their services or to prioritize us interleaved with their own capability. And all they have to do is point terminals existing in the field, already deployed, 
at our satellite instead of their own, and away they go. And that's an unprecedented level of interoperability uh, that we can deliver uniquely among uh, the uh, SATCOMS community. The other thing they can do with our commercial KA is they can extend their coverage really dramatically. So they can have regional proprietary capabilities and then they can bridge into commercial KA in a very seamless, agile way. And we think those two capabilities are really unique. Well, first of all, I, I thought the attendance this year was fantastic. I think it was record attendance. And if you walk the floor of the exhi exhibition stands, um, it felt very businesslike. It was a fantastic hum of activity. So I think as an industry, we're beginning to get more confident that we're coming through out of the recession, out the other side, into a new era of growth. And I think that's supported by the big news around, around the corridors, which is all about innovation for growth. And without beating the Immersat drum too much, I think at the core of that is the news that Global Express is so nearly operational. The launch of the first satellite in December was a seismic moment for the industry because it made GX appear so real. That satellite is now fully tested and will enter commercial service as early as the half year. And just behind it come two further satellites to deliver that global network. And on the back of that revolution of a global high throughput capability comes the ecosystem of, of suppliers, of terminal suppliers, of distributors and value-added resellers, of solutions providers. It's a real shot in the arm for the industry through that $1.6 billion of investment. 